This is Good Morning San Diego. As San Diego schools remain closed, many parents are still trying to figure out how to homeschool their children. After the break, Mark Powell from the San Diego County Office of Education. Well, he'll join us to share some tips and more when Good Morning San Diego returns. As San Diego schools remain closed, many parents are still trying to figure out how to homeschool their kids. Here with tips on that is Mark Powell. He's from the San Diego County Office of Education. Mr. Powell joining us via the wonders of Skype. How are you doing this morning, Mark? I'm good. Good morning. How are you, Paul? Really good. Well, let's start kind of with the what we think will be the, the pending news. The L.A. school system has already announced they're going to postpone the return of kids uh, into May. To May, I, I would assume that the San Diego is not going to be too far behind in that announcement. Would you concur with that assessment? You know, I really don't know what's going to happen because I've heard a lot of different uh, stories. In fact, um, um, it's going to be a little challenging. The one thing that I do know is that we're looking at 780 schools closed right now with half a million students home and uh, parents need some help. I'm a parent. I have kids home just like everybody else. And I would like to supply some parents with some pointers. Maybe we can help them out a bit through these trying times. All right. Well, fair enough. I will tell an anecdote that I had. I shared with Allie and the audience a little while ago. I was walking through the neighborhood, walking the dogs, and I was peering into windows in the afternoon after my morning shift. And I saw parents and children around laptops. The kids were wearing headphones. And I saw this multiple home homes where it looked like school was in session from the d l dining room table or wherever that, you know, whatever room I was peering into as uh, we walked by with the dogs. That has to encourage you. People are participating in this process, are they not? Well, uh, 100%. Now, everybody has to participate in the process because our kids are home and they're sitting around doing virtually nothing if they're not studying. You don't want them spending their whole time playing video games on their iPhone. So what I recommend is first have a routine. Have your kids get up just like they are every day. Have them take a shower and get ready, sit down and have breakfast. And uh, second thing is to have a space in the house designated for your kid to learn. Now, some people don't have giant houses. You know, some people live in apartments. So carve out a little area and put that routine in writing. I wanna show you what we did over here. I have this, I don't know if you guys can see this. This is my one daughter's routine. So we have um, everything set up for her so that she can um, actually study and follow the same routine that she would in school. Very good. Uh, so what is the one thing that you're hearing from parents? I know everyone has tremendous respect for teachers and what they do for our community. But now because teachers are, are forced to the sidelines and parents have to step into that role on a more daily basis, what is the one thing parents are saying to you that you're hearing that perhaps they were a little surprised about? Okay. And, and once again, it's a good question. Um, they're saying we never knew that it was this hard. I don't think parents really um, knew how hard it is to show up every day, 180 days a year, and teach students. Now they're getting an idea of just how difficult and how challenging the work is for a teacher and how they have to be on top of things. And also, Paul, remember, we have three different kind of classes. We have elementary school classes, which there's 20 every 20 minutes or so, you got to change the routine. We have middle school classes. And, you know, kids in middle school, they're going through all sorts of different changes. They're very squirmy. And we have high school where kids are prepping for their life. They're studying their AP classes. They're wanting to get ready for college. So three different classes. Parents have to adjust to those different types of schedules. Mark, I think the most eye-opening thing for a lot of us is is how little we know. I mean, when when a youngster <laughs> a asks you to help them oh, with yeah. a math problem, and, and next thing you I'm know, I'm telling you, so true. It, it is difficult. My my daughter's an AP calculus. That's advanced placement calculus, and there's really no way that I'm going to be able to help her with that. So, what I recommend is that parents access district websites and resources. So, if you go on to the San Diego County Office of Education or, or whatever district you're at, you can look up some resources. A good resource is Khan Academy. Scholastic.com is a good resource. You can access YouTube websites to teach um, a multiple, a multitude 
multitude of subjects. And, um, and also, one thing, parents need to monitor their emails for communications from their schools. And oftentimes those emails may end up in a junk or spam folder. So have them check their junk or spam folder to make sure that they're receiving all the communications. And if they don't have email, they'll be getting phone calls. Oftentimes schools will follow up an email with a phone call. So make sure you're monitoring communications from the school. And also, Paul, um, parents, don't be so hard on yourself. And please don't be really hard on your children. These are very stressful times for parents and kids. So just do the best you can and work with the resources you have available at your house. Mr. Powell, thank you so much for spending time on our airwaves, and we wish you a great day of education, a great day oh, of yeah. safe social distancing, okay? It's, it's school starts at about an hour and a half, so we'll be on right. doing the same routine. Ring the bell. Let me know when it's recess. Exactly. All right, thank Mark you. Powell, everybody.